All right, well, we have arrived in Indiana, which right. I think is our 26th or 27th state. Exactly, it's a brand new state for us. Right, our first brand new state since Arkansas. Uh, of 2019. Two 2019, so uh, exactly. yeah. Our requirement is, of course, you have to spend the night in the state. You just can't drive through it. So. Right. Um, yeah, so we're here at Chain of Lakes State Park. As you can tell, it's, it's pretty windy here, but it doesn't even compare to our hitch up in Jackson Center. Yeah, it must have been 30, 40 mile an hour winds there. It was 20, yeah, sustained 40 mile an hour gusts. It was nearly blowing me over. And tip for, uh, for down the road, if you need a hairstyle for long hair and wind, the little side buns and the uh, headband are perfect. Absolutely. So we're here for a couple of days. We're here for one reason, which we'll show you later on. Exactly. One of the primary reasons we came to this part of Indiana was to visit Townsend's, a colonial period catalog company located in Pearson. They have Friday afternoon live streams and they also post YouTube videos, which we find very interesting. What would get see? I'm getting this hand-painted marble redware bowl and a redware pipe. Hi, plate. And the kitchen cover. Nice, that's a good spice. Yes. All good stuff, I see. All good stuff. And the uh, warehouse was not as small as I was anticipating, so they had a lot of stuff there that you could look through. It was very interesting but you do have to make an appointment a day, at least a day in advance, and they have to be available for an appointment, and it's only Tuesdays through Thursdays, I believe, that they take appointments. So just make sure you check the website if you wanna come here. Today we are at the RV Motorhome Hall of Fame and Museum. Exactly. You can see that, it's right off of I-80, and we're gonna go ahead and do some touring here. We got here a little late, but and we also had some refrigerator issues, which we'll talk about later. Yes, we had to troubleshoot the fridge because it wasn't starting on propane, and we are boondocking here in the parking lot. So we'll show you that setup. And we'll show you the museum. All right, we're gonna start at the Go RVing Hall, which apparently has some modern units. So we'll take a look at that. As opposed to this little guy here, what's this in? Like a little, little teardrop, teardrop huh? from, I think they said 1941? Nope, 1946. Okay, yeah, I was just... That little guy in there. A little cute teardrop made of wood. Cool little kitchen in the back. Look at the little kitchen. Cool, so let's oh, go ahead and see what we got in here, Beans. Yeah. This is a cool little unit, huh, Sid? Yeah, they said you can go inside of some of these, so uh, if it's not roofed off, it's... Kind of like a... I don't know what this is. It's like it's a like, tent like on a, a tent. platform. It's sort of like a tent... Um, with rugs. Look at this, Sid. This is like a retro thing. It says 2016. 16, but look at this. It's so cute. A little tight inside. Let's see. But it's adorable. This one here. Check out the key in the back. Okay, so this is the section that I'm really excited about because this is going to have some historically significant RVs from Winnebago's to some of the early tent campers to, of course, an Airstream. That's pretty cool how this one has this kind of its kitchen that slides out the back. It's got kind of bed in there. So what have you found here, see? So this looks like it might have been the, fir the initial first model motorhome. And it has a double A Ford chassis, it looks like, in the front. Or is that is that the correct term? Yep. And uh, it looks kind of like a train, doesn't it? Like a train car. Oh, look at the seats. Where's the airbags? 
And over here, over here, we have the world's smallest airstream ever built, built by Wally Bion himself. Yeah, so this one's only 13 feet. And I think they actually said, I once read whereby this is the smallest it can be because you have the end cap on both the front and back and the door. You actually can't make anything smaller. I see a toilet. Let's see if we can't get a uh, shot on the inside here. Holy Toledo, this thing is covered, this thing is covered in leatherette. Who covers a trailer in leather? But in 1935, I guess they did. So this trailer is significant for two reasons. First, it's the first one to ever use fiberglass in its construction. And second, this bed comes out, so it's touted as the first slide out ever. So you can kind of see the first slide out, the first use of fiberglass, this was 19, this was a 1955 Ranger. So pretty cool, pretty historically significant. Get a closer look. See the beds held up with chains? Kind of a pop top too. Oh, the, so the slide out actually is another bed. Yeah. This was a house car made for Mae West back in 1931, and this was an incentive for her to leave Vaudeville and to join a movie company, um, Paramount Studios. And this was supposed to be a chauffeur-driven house car and not actually meant to be slept in. And so it just has a place to sit as she's being driven to and from her studio, from the house, from her house. And it has a place where she can make tea and it has a little veranda out back where she Let's go check that out. I don't, they, they I don't, say she used to sit in a rocking chair. I don't consider Mae West to be a big, uh, oh, that's kind of cool, like a patio. Look at that, like a train. How cool is that? Miranda, she used to sit out there in a rocking chair between shoots. This looks like a bolus right here, Beans. They're remaking these bolus road chiefs. They're like $265,000 yes, for a new one. they're super expensive. That's cool looking though. But this is the original 35 Road Chief from Harvey Bolas, I think, who Airstream worked for, Wally Byam. Yep. That's unusual looking. Yes, it was built in 1988 using some 1970s chassis and a 1970s engine. It was The concept was it was gonna be fitting into a standard garage. <laughs> Look at the front of this thing. You know what that reminds me of? Holiday Road. That's like the, the National Lampoon vacation car in the front of it. This looks like an elongated station wagon. Yeah, look at that. What year was this? It was built in 1988, but it had a lot of parts in it. Check out this one. This one looks like a trolley. Look at that. Is that the front? Yeah, that's the front. Looks like a trolley, doesn't it? Oh, that's it? the coolest thing ever to drive that good and driving that thing. We'd have to pull it. I don't think that's the front beans. I think you were wrong there, unless you're driving from that chair. Well, you should check out the toilet, though. Oh, look at that thing. Holy Toledo. Look at that toilet. Look how long this thing is. How big is it? It looks like it goes forever. Oh my God. It? Doesn't it? This is like the long, long trailer. It Let's is. go back there and see. We're allowed in this one. Yeah. Nice big kitchen, double sink. Oh, that's cool, whatever that Four is. Four burner like, gas. Maybe a coffee grinder? Um, yeah, I don't know what that is. Oh. If you know what this is, leave a comment below. I think it looks like a coffee grinder to me, but we'll see. A little residential fridge. Check out the stove. I oh, love yeah. it. At least it has a window. Mine doesn't have a window. Some bunk beds. Oh my goodness, this thing goes on forever and ever and ever. Can you imagine towing this thing? Look, it has a real bathtub. All right, let's just pause the video here for a second. You know, whether you're at an RV show or even a museum, it always amazes me that we feel the need that we have to tape a toilet shut or people would use them. Really? All right, back to the video. The, bed, the master bedroom was, and there's a door on this side, look. Yep. This is really neat. 
Look, they didn't even get a sewing machine. Oh, they, they put their cooktops someplace separate when they're stowed. I didn't catch that, but they did. 1954 Spartan Imperial Man Mansion. I want to know how. I want to know how long this thing. Well, is. there might be some stuff outside. How long is that thing? It's 42 feet. Holy! What's the bit, what's the longest uh, trailer that they make now these days? I mean, I think some of the fifth wheels go up to uh, like 40 something feet, but that's yeah, pretty but big. It's just because it's so narrow. What have you found here, see? This is a motorhome or a, what do they call them, house cars, that was made by a Hollywood cinematographer. And apparently it's called the Star because it has a star emblem on the front of it. I think it's one of a kind. That is gorgeous. Look how it's shaped. That is absolutely beautiful. I tell you, anyone who loves vintage RVs, vintage motorhomes, has to love these old GMCs. I love this one, but it's bright yellow and it just screams the 70s, doesn't it? Well, yellow, orange, it's all 70s colors. Well, check out the check out the interior. Please have shag carpet. It does. Oh, yes, and carpet orange. On, and carpet on the door. Oh, this and is... Ch and check out the, 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 the sort of the blocky cabinetry. And orange curtains. Look at that shag carpet. Look at this. This is a time capsule. 1974. There's the color palette. Painted desert. I love how they run the. So this one was pineapple side. yellow, which was standard. Don't you love it? it? And it. It's even on the roof. Look, yellow. Over there too. Fridge. The yellow fridge. I mean, it is just. Yellow. This is your shower. Or I should say motorhome. This is actually one of the motorhomes that I've been most looking forward to. And it's this 1967 Winnebago motorhome. And the reason I want to see it is like I've said with a few of the others, so many of these things just get abused, right? They're not maintained. You see them and they're rusted. It's like Cousin Eddie's RV. They're rusted out, they're beat up. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what a well-restored one of these so what classic Winnebago history. D22s look like. So it gives you a sense of history. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like inside. Oh yeah, look at this. Oh, look at that. Look at that dashboard. That's the greatest thing I've ever seen. Bunk bed up there. That's a minimalist dashboard, isn't it? I would say so. Wow. I love it when they put the uh, ashtrays on the side here. You know that they were being actively used. I just want to pull that so bad, just to see <laughs> what it that's does. A, that's a cigarette lighter, babes. Is it? I think so. Well, then I want to pull one of those things. I just want to pull something. Something. One of them is a cigarette lighter, because we used to have one like that in one of our cars. Before we headed out to our own RV, we checked out their vast library of RV research material, as well as checking out our favorite member of the Hall of Fame, Wally Byam himself, the founder of Airstream. So I often mention that RV is sometimes fixing things in beautiful places. Well, this is fixing things in parking lot, but when we got in, Cindy was trying to light the uh, uh, refrigerator on propane because we're boondocking here at the RV Museum and Hall of Fame. So we need to run our refrigerator on propane and she hit was striking it like a crazy, just going on and on. It usually takes a few strikes. Right. But, and if you hear I-80, that's behind us. Yes. Um, it takes a few strikes, but this just wasn't happening. So we needed to troubleshoot, we got out the manual. But it's a perfect example of how Sid and I work together as a team because we came out here, we found out that this wire had detached itself. This is the wire that sends the signal from the fridge to the uh, igniter 
to ignite the propane. So that one was detached and Cindy was able to get inside there small fingers. with her small fingers and go ahead and, and reattach it. Reattach that wire. We went into there and after trying for like 20 minutes, two presses, bang, it fridge starts up. Yep. We're good to go. So yeah, so if you're boondocking and your fridge doesn't work, that's not a good sign. Yeah, we were like starting to think about we need to find a campsite for tonight if we can't get this fridge going, but we did the troubleshooting, got it fixed. Now we're going to spend the night just south of I-80, literally boondocking. Yes. And we can see where all those trucks are, that's I-80. We're going to get some road noise tonight. All right, you can see here that we are boondocked at the RV Museum and Hall of Fame. They have about five pull-through sites. But there's some other sites that you can kind of hang out in, like that uh, B van over there. It's just kind of pulled in that way. So yeah, we're just kind of pulled in. You can see I've got my stabilizers down. I typically do not put the jack down unless I need to raise the trailer up. But you can see we're pretty, uh, see that we are pretty stinking level both ways here. I do unplug my pigtail as I've said before. And I, and I know you don't need to do that, but I just do. And for people that say, well, do you remove the stress from your hitch? by taking it off or yeah I don't that's 72 pounds of solid steel Cindy and I walking around the airstream is not going to be any more of a stress than say going down the highway so, yeah it's kind of pretty cool a big huge fifth wheel there okay see so what's for dinner tonight we're doing our pizza that we did in this video, and we are adding some of our nutmeg pe traders pepper. Kitchen that, pepper, right? Kitchen pepper that we got from Townsend's. So that's a spice from the 1800s, right? The 17. It is, and it's, and it's a very unusual. Or 1700s, 18th century. Yes, it's very unusual. It's got some cinnamon cloves, nutmeg, pepper. So it, it's a mix of spices, and it's. Smells amazing. So this is sort Let of. Let me smell. Oh yeah, it smells wonderful. <laughs> smell a vision. Yep. Let's see what we have going here. Pizza. You say you've got a non-tomato based. Not tomato based. It's oil based. It's kind of sort of an Italian dressing style with some garlic. Um, chicken leftover from our trip to the Mad Anthony, Mad yeah. Anthony Lakes Brewery. Yep. In Warsaw. So that's, these are our leftovers. The topping is the leftovers. And if you hear that noise in the background, they are mowing every lawn around the area here. Exactly. All right, so that's dinner while boondocking. So a key for your oven, if you have a gas light from underneath, is you need a barrier to protect your cooked goods from the excessive heat that comes up above and this little pizza stone does the trick and, and how so, did we learn that because i actually forgot the pizza stone and i did a sourdough bread and i burnt the bottom of the sourdough bread and i was like what did i do differently and i said i did not put that pizza stone in there and so that pizza stone is kind of key to creating a barrier between the excessive heat from your gas coming up and where do you store the pizza stone when we travel? We have a little, uh, little, little wrap here that goes around the pizza stone and, and then it stores in underneath the fridge. Very cool. Good job, C. I see how to turn out. Uh, it looks great. It's a finished product. There's no tomato sauce on that. No, we, we went with an oil-based sauce tonight just to complement the chicken because the chicken was kind of a Thai base and so I wanted to try something different. And of course, because we are boondocking, paper plates are in order. So we're trying to save gray water. And so as you can see, to take that chill off in the morning, it was about 49, 50 degrees here. We let our little buddy 
Mr. Heater. Join us next week as we visit our first national park of the 2021 season. But for now, it's time for us to enjoy our coffee. So if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. And if you think we've earned a subscription, click to subscribe. And comment below if you've been to the RV Museum and what exhibit you like the most. Because we come out with RV and Airstream related videos just like this one every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.